Now you behave. Sure was picking on me. Hi guys. I am here with a vlog for you guys because I told you guys in the video vlog yesterday if you watched it that I would try to update you guys today in a vlog about because I was going to the doctor today and stuff. And I did not cancel. I went this time. Cindy made me go pretty much. Cindy and mom took me. Danielle so super sweet. The nurse. One of my nurses. And Michelle is too. But Danielle, she always takes me right back because she knows, um, because my anxiety, I don't like, it makes me really nervous and really uncomfortable being in the waiting room full of a whole bunch of people, you know. So she always takes me right back and I didn't even know she knew I was there. I think she just seen me and was like, come on back, you know. And she helped push the wheelchair because Cindy and, her, or Cindy and mom have a hard time with it because I'm so big and... Um, I don't know, mom's back hurts and her shoulder hurts and Cindy's not very strong and but Danielle pushed it. She's like, I got this. <laughs> she pushed it like it wasn't nothing. Gave me my flu shot, I had my flu shot today. I had to have blood work. Check a few things. Oh uh, what was we checking? Something in the blood work she wanted to check, but I can't remember what it was. But anyway, just doing the blood work. Um, I got a few changes in some of my medicine. Two of them changed, really. My gabapentin for my, she put me on for my sciatica. Well, when I first started taking it, it's 100 milligrams three times a day. And it it worked really, really well. I like the pain, like pretty much went away, and I was like had relief for the first time in years, years. I've had this for years, no lie. And it looks like it's gonna rain, guys. But anyways, um, then I told her, you know, it started gradually running, not working. So she thought, which I thought as well, that if she raised the dosage, that it would start helping again, which I thought that too. Um, so she raised it from 100 three times a day to 300 milligrams three times a day. So hopefully we'll get that good. And for my sciatica and my lungs, um, see I didn't know about this stuff. Cindy told me because a girl I worked a lot where they have yard sales and they meet on mine and stuff. April knows if you're watching this April what I'm talking about. Anyway, somebody at the lot told her that two things that um, she took that her doctor gave her made her feel like a new woman, like she hasn't felt in years. And one was a Voltron pill, which she said was the most wonderful thing. It made her feel like she was young again. See, the Voltron gel, uh, Dr. Waller prescribed it for me before. But they, the insurance would not cover the gel. Mom got the gel, and I tried some of Mom's, and that, that's why I asked Dr. Walter for some for myself. But they wouldn't cover the gel. So I didn't know nothing about a pill. I didn't know they had a pill until Cindy told me that that girl told her. So I asked Dr. Walter about it today, and if she gave it to me, put me on it. And um, so, yeah, what was I talking about? Put me on what? Vulture. Vulture pill. pill. See how my mind is? I swear. I've tried to rest I've restarted this video yes. several times already because I'll be in the middle of telling you guys something and then I'll just forget what I was talking about. Vulture pill. I am so sorry. The Vulture pill. So I didn't know they had a pill. So that is really cool. But it's really weird as well because the Vulture gel, you're only supposed to put it on the lower part of your body, like you can put it on your butt for your sciatic and stuff, and your lower, like back, you're not allowed, you're not supposed to put it on your upper back, like where your lungs are, but I did anyways, because my lungs were killing me, and it never bothered me, but they said not to do that, because it could cause in internal bleeding, so it don't make sense to me that it could cause internal bleeding with the gel and be so dangerous. But then they have a pill of it, and you swallow it and put it in your body. That makes no sense to me. But anyway, 
And then that woman said that she had a cream. So, um, Lytoderm, I think. That's a generic name. I, um, what was it? The generic one is this, uh, I think, lidocaine or something like that. And, you know, it's like a numbing medicine. And I got it for my sciatica and my um, lungs. So she said there's patches and there's cream of that. And Cindy told her to give me the cream. So that's what that girl had. We didn't know they even had patches. But, but she said the patches, I don't know, something about the patches that she thought the cream would work better too. So we got the cream. And I was so afraid that my insurance was not going to cover this because I know something that's going to help, they're not going to cover, right? Especially over at our pharmacy over here because, yeah, we have a lot of trouble with them. But it covered both of them. So I'm really excited about starting this new medicine and hopefully feeling better. So, so excited. I got my anxiety medicine filled. I haven't took any yet. It'll last me a while. I had to fill out all this paperwork and stuff today, and uh, I don't know, they had told me all of it. They've never done it before. It's like I felt like a drug addict. I mean, I felt really bad, like they thought I was abusing drugs or something. But I haven't had my Valium filled in a month or two, I don't think. it's over. It was overdue because um, I don't abuse it. I only take it when I really, really need it, and sometimes I'll take it at bedtime because... I'll have all this anxiety and racing thoughts through my head, and I can't sleep unless I take one. But I don't take them unless I need them. Why are you doing that? Sherman's making fun of me again. Call me crazy. Um, stop it. Now I'm going to make me forget what I was talking about. See what you did? Now what was I talking about this time? Diane. Oh, yeah, the value. And I uh, so uncomfortable. But then, because then they, I told them I'd take a blood test or anything because, you know, I do not abuse them. And they're like, you know, tell me about, you're not allowed to sell them to people. You're not allowed to give them to people. Um, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I just felt really bad. Like, they thought I was a drug addict. And that is, I am not, I mean, I, I am not. I would stop taking it right now if they thought I was a drug addict, you know. I would have a severe anxiety, but I would stop taking it or, and stop getting it altogether. But um, she want, they wanted me to do a urine test, and it's a new cup now, and it, tells you automatically like if something's in there or whatever <clears throat> but I always take my urine cups home and do them because what? Those are given. A cup like that. Yeah, they're new. And they're, they're regular, regular cups. Yeah, and they're bigger. They're bigger and they and when you put your urine in it or whatever, she said it lets you know right then if what have you. She said like for instance, not you, but for instance if you had marijuana in your system, it would show up like right then and stuff. Yeah. And some people will like dispute it and say like, no, I'm not smoking marijuana or whatever. So then they'll have to send it off to get further testing on it. Um, but anyways, yeah, they wanted a urine test and I always take my, they always give me a cup and a hat to take home with me because my bladder is very, very shy and stupid. It's always been. Because I can never pee when I have to pee. And m the way my bladder is, I heard some days I go without peeing at all. And I drank some pop, and I told them I wasn't going to be able to pee. But they said I, did, I couldn't take the cup home. I had to do it there, which also made me feel horrible because I thought they thought I was going to, you know, put somebody else's urine in there or something. But, of course, I would not do that. And Cindy's like, because she had to pee really bad. And she's like, I'll fill it up for you. And they're like, uh, I, thought they, I think they thought she was serious. But she's just joking, of course. Um, 
But yeah, I felt horrible. And then they're like, since I couldn't get it out, no urine out, they're like, um, do you care if we catheterize you? I said, no, that's fine. Because that's usually what has to happen at the ERs and stuff when I'm in there. And they need a urine sample, which is like every time you go to the ER. And I tell them, I cannot pee. So they always end up doing a catheter. So I told them I didn't mind them doing a catheter. It was no problem at all, you know. Because I'd rather them have done it to know that I'm not, like, abusing the drugs or whatever. So I wouldn't, like, feel horrible. Cause I, made, I just, I don't know. This made me feel like they thought I was a drug addict. And I don't want them thinking that way about me, you know. But anyways, I don't know. But then they said they didn't have no catheters. I kind of think they just didn't want to do it. They didn't feel comfortable, um, which I didn't feel comfortable either because it was really embarrassing because, like, I'm, like, really, I'm, like, close to the nurses, you know, or, like, friends, and it's, it's just, it would feel so weird, you know. But I would have done it. No, I would have done it regardless. But it would, I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. I thought this is going to be so embarrassing. They're going to, you know, see me down there. I thought, oh, no. That's crazy. Please. But then I didn't have to get it done. But they said um, to come back in and give a urine sample. Because next time I came in or something, I would have to be able to pee. So I'm going to try to drink a lot before I go back and hold my urine in as much as I can. See, I'll have to pee, even here at home, I'll have to pee so, so bad. And then when I go to the bathroom to pee, it stops. Nothing comes out. And it's so aggravating. You feel like you're going to bust, but it won't come out. Oh, it makes me so mad. But yeah, Sherm goes to the doctor, I think, on the 25th, so they said I could come in then with him to give a urine sample, um, so I might do that, just to get it over with to prove, you know, that I'm not a drug addict or whatever, so they'll know I'm not abusing my anxiety medication. Um, but yeah, that's my news. That's what happened today. I didn't even get weighed today, come to think of it. And I was wondering if I gained weight from those steroids. Did it weigh you? No, it didn't weigh me. It was in a different room. It was in that room where the lab chair is, that big, big oh. lab chair. I had to have blood work today. I didn't know if I told you guys that already. And that nurse there at the lab, she always gets it first try. Every single time. And nobody ever does that to me. Ever. You can ask Cindy. I came out of um, Adina once and H Hosier as well for one was this routine blood work. and But the other time was to try to get an IV for a CAT scan. I came out of there wrapped up in five different places. Both my hands, both my arms. Yeah, no joke. It was horrible. That's how it always is whenever anybody tries to take my blood. And she gets it first try every time. Every time. But she never, she don't really talk. You try to talk to her, but she won't really say anything. But, but she's really good at her job. That's for sure. Um, so, and I have, Danielle gave me my flu shot. I got it today. I'm still good on my pneumonia vaccine because it, you know, every five years. And I'm pretty sure it hasn't been that long yet. But anyway, she said she would like to see me back, which I knew they would. Uh, I knew they would. My fingernails got in my hair. <laughs> this makes the second time that's done that? <laughs> Jeez. Oh, man. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Only me. Um, no, what was I talking about? We want to see you back. Oh, yeah, want to see me back. She said, we'd really like to see you at least once a month um, because of all your problems. 
with your lungs, your breathing, and my oxygen. That's my oxygen. They want to talk about my oxygen. There was drops throughout the night in my oxygen, which of course, you know. And I told her that I use the oxygen during the day sometimes as well because it helps my lungs as well. And yeah, she completely understood all that. And so that was what the deal with was the auction room was. So it was nothing really, just to tell me that I had some drops in my oxygen and that they had to just, you know, reapprove it like they had to do sometimes, she said. You had to have a reason to, you know, reapprove it or whatever. So she reapproved my oxygen, of course. And she said, we'd like to see you back at least once a month, but we don't want to, you know, force you to come, like hold your Valium <laughs> against you for not to come in, she said. But um, I said, I'll try. You know, I can't make no promises, but I'll try to come in uh, once a month. But I don't know, it's getting winter time, and I really, really, really don't want to go out in the winter. Now, when it gets spring, I might start going once a month. Um, but she said, yeah, she really needs to see me because of all my health problems. So, yeah, not just my physical problems, but my mood and mental health as well, she said. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So that is my news. I'm trying to think of something. Look what Cindy got me. Bazooka Bubblegum. I think she got it at um, the Dollar Tree, I think. Now, I remember this when I was a kid, and so does Sharon, but you know what? You, might, you guys remember this? If you were a kid back in the day when I was, in the 80s and 90s, these had cartoons on them. Remember, they had little cartoon strips. They don't no more. It is wrapped up in plain paper. That's not bazooka gum to me. Not bazooka at all. <laughs> anyway, sure made some chicken patties, so I haven't ate mine yet. I'm really not even hungry. But I'm going to get off here and try to eat some since he made it. And. What do you mean you're not hungry? Huh? What do you mean you're not hungry? I'm not. My stomach's still like queasy. Sherm thinks we went out to eat, but we didn't, I swear. The only place we went was to the doctor, and it took hours. And then we stopped at the Dollar General so Mom could get me some vapor rub and some light bulbs. Yes, I got light, guys. I got light bulbs. So, that's the news, and I will let you guys go. I hope you guys have a good my gum scared me to death. I was going to bounce off the stand. <laughs> I hate my eyes. They are so small and squinty. I hate them so much. I just hate them. See how little they are when I smile? It's like, ah, I don't got no eyeballs at all when I smile. And I hate my voice and I hate seeing my fat self on the camera. But my eyes, every time I do a video, it's like, Open your eyes wider, and then you look crazy if you open your eyes wider. But every time, my eyes look so skinny and slinted, and look my smile. Look how stupid I look. My <laughs> eyes are... Mm-hmm. Sherman Crabtree. He thinks he's so funny. All right, I'll let you guys go. I hope you guys have a good rest of your night, and God willing, I'll see you guys again tomorrow with uh, another Bible reading, and maybe another vlog. You never know. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys.